She walked into my life with a fairy tale style then walked out, leaving me shattered as her new admirers lined up on social media. This isn't just an occasional flourish for special occasions. This is her daily attire, except at her workplace. With her striking looks, she carries this style with an effortless grace, and initially, I found it utterly charming. However, as our relationship has progressed, I become increasingly aware of how much time and effort she dedicates to maintaining this unique aesthetic. She doesn't just wear these clothes. She lives and breathes this style. She runs a popular blog dedicated to her fashion sensibilities, which garners a significant following. Daily, she's engaged in posting photos, managing links to similar clothing items, and even creating pieces for her Etsy store. Her day often involves hours of sewing and preparing content for her blog. Our outings together often turn into public spectacles. It's not uncommon for people to stare openly, and some even go as far as to take photos of her, thinking they've spotted a character stepped out from a storybook. This level of attention has started to make me feel uncomfortable. I once suggested that perhaps she could tone down her outfits a bit, especially when we are together. In response, she merely opted to leave out accessories like hairpieces, but her overall style remained unchanged. I love her deeply and appreciate her for who she is, but I've also expressed my concerns about how her style might affect the way others perceive her. Her intelligence and kindness are qualities I admire immensely, and I worry these might be overshadowed by her dramatic attire. Despite these talks, she seems to dismiss my concerns, perhaps thinking I'm asking her to change who she is. Her new job, which I hoped might encourage a more conventional style, actually did the opposite. Her boss and colleagues have been incredibly supportive of her unique fashion sense. When my girlfriend landed her new job, I harbored a quiet hope that the professional environment might nudge her towards a more conventional style of dress. Perhaps, I thought, the demands and decorum of the workplace would gently steer her away from her fairy tale inspired wardrobe to something a bit more mainstream. However, the reality turned out to be quite the opposite. Rather than conforming to the typical office attire, her unique style was met with enthusiasm and encouragement from her new colleagues and boss. Far from being seen as out of place, her distinctive dresses and accessories became a point of fascination and admiration within the office. Her boss, a dynamic woman known for encouraging creativity, praised her for her authenticity and the personal flair she brought to the team. Her colleagues too, often expressed their delight in seeing her daily outfit choices, which they viewed as a breath of fresh air in the sometimes state office environment. This acceptance and support not only boosted her confidence but also affirmed her belief in personal expression through fashion. It became clear that her style was more than just clothing, it was a fundamental part of her identity that resonated with those around her. The workplace, which I had assumed would demand conformity, instead became a space where her creativity and uniqueness were celebrated, enhancing her sense of belonging and fulfillment at work. This unexpected outcome reminded me of the importance of embracing individuality. It reinforced the idea that personal style and professional success are not mutually exclusive but can indeed enhance one another in a supportive environment. However, navigating this aspect of our relationship has been challenging. I want to be supportive and celebrate her individuality, but I also feel a need to discuss the potential long-term impacts of her choices without coming across as critical or unsupportive. It's a delicate balance, finding a way to communicate my feelings effectively without undermining her expression of self. I'm still figuring out how best to approach this conversation, hoping to find a way that respects both her style and my concerns. How can I talk to her about dressing more appropriately without hurting her feelings? Update 1 I didn't plan on updating, but things changed. I've had a lot to process and reckon with, emotionally and personally. I've been grappling with my thoughts about how to approach my girlfriend about her dressing style, intending to strike a balance between supporting her uniqueness and feeling more at ease in public together. However, life threw a curveball before I could broach the subject. Last week, out of the blue, she called me after work, asking if she could stop by my place. I agreed, thinking perhaps we could enjoy a relaxed evening and maybe even discuss my thoughts over dinner. But the moment she arrived, I sensed something was off. She declined my offer to cook dinner, saying instead that we needed to have a serious conversation. Half-jokingly, I asked if she was breaking up with me, and the look of guilt that flashed across her face said it all before she even spoke. She explained that she felt we were at different stages in our lives, wanting different things for our futures. During that conversation, she sat across from me at our favorite little cafe, the one with the quirky art on the walls and the mismatched chairs that somehow added charm to our usual meetups. As she spoke, her voice was calm, almost rehearsed, as if she had gone over the speech multiple times in her head before actually voicing it out loud. I sat there, mostly in silence, nodding occasionally, trying to process the weight of her words. It felt surreal, this stark contrast between the lively ambience of the cafe and the somber mood at our table. She talked about how she envisioned her future, filled with aspirations and plans that didn't seem to include me. It wasn't about fault or blame, it was just a realization that our paths, once so aligned, were now diverging. I remember watching her, the way her hands moved animatedly as she explained her need for change, how important it was for her to follow her dreams, which now required her to move to a new city. The realization that we were breaking up sank in slowly, like a stone gradually making its way to the bottom of a lake. It was my first time being on the receiving end of a breakup. Until then, I'd somehow managed to avoid this particular kind of heartache. 
I had always heard that breakups were tough, but experiencing it firsthand was a different ordeal altogether. We parted ways that day with a promise to remain friends, a hopeful note and a melody that had turned melancholic. But as I walked away, the emptiness of the promise hung heavy in the air. The suddenness of it all left me reeling. One moment we were planning weekend getaways, and the next, we were saying goodbye. The following days were a blur of emotions, moments of rational understanding interspersed with pangs of loss. It's been rough, to say the least. The loneliness feels more acute at night, and there are moments when I catch myself reaching out to text her about something funny or interesting before reality hits me again. I've been trying to keep busy, to fill the void with hobbies and meetups with friends. But the adjustment is a work in progress, a journey of relearning how to be just me again, without the s that had become so integral to my identity. The breakup, as gentle and as reason as it was, marked the end of a chapter. But the suddenness of it left me reeling. It was my first experience being on the receiving end of a breakup, and frankly, it's been rough. Therefore, amidst the turbulence of emotions, there's a burgeoning sense of personal growth and understanding that sometimes, loving someone means letting them go. And so, as I forge ahead, there's a part of me that's thankful for the shared memories and hopeful for what the future holds. For both of us. Specifically with social media at play, navigating the fallout has been especially difficult. I noticed a surge of interactions on her profile as soon as her relationship status changed. All these, alternative-looking guys have been liking her posts and commenting on her pictures. They've been liking her posts and leaving comments, and it stings to see. I know it's probably nothing serious. I don't think she's seeing these guys, but it still hurts. Each notification I saw felt like a small jab. While I know logically that social media interactions are often superficial and don't necessarily signify anything deeper, the speed and intensity of their engagement stung. It was hard not to feel replaced or overlooked, as though our past moments together could be quickly overshadowed by a few well-placed likes and comments. I tried to reassure myself with the situation. These guys were likely just friends and admirers from her blogging community who felt more at liberty to express themselves now that she was publicly single. Yet knowing this didn't alleviate the discomfort. Watching this unfold felt like observing a part of her life where I no longer had a place or say. It was a clear, if unintended signal that our chapter had closed, and new ones were beginning for her, ones in which I had no role. This surge in online interactions highlighted how different our worlds were, despite the time we shared. Her world, vibrant and constantly on display, contrasts sharply with my more reserved private nature. It's a difference that perhaps I hadn't fully appreciated, until seeing the ease with which her community rallied around her newfound singleness. The rational part of me knows that this shouldn't be taken to heart. That social media is just a facade and doesn't always reflect the complexities of real life. It serves as a constant reminder of what was, and what has now changed. As I continue to grapple with these feelings, I find myself needing to step back from online spaces at times to protect my emotional well-being, reminding myself to focus on personal healing rather than lingering over what appears on a screen. Amidst dealing with my feelings, a friend of mine has been trying to cheer me up and even suggested setting me up on a date. He thinks it might help me move on, introduce a bit of normalcy, or at least distraction. But I'm broken. Part of me thinks it could be a good distraction, yet another part feels unready to step into the dating world again so soon. It feels like I'd just be going through the motions, not really present or fair to the person I'd be meeting. This whole situation has made me more introspective about what I need right now. Perhaps I should focus on healing and redefining my own goals before jumping back into dating. It's a confusing time, trying to discern between moving on and giving myself the space to recover from a relationship that I wasn't ready to end. As for my friend's suggestion, I appreciate his intentions, but I think I might need a little more time to just be on my own, reflect on my past relationship, and rebuild my emotional resilience. Update 2 Stumbling upon an old email account can feel like opening a time capsule. That's exactly what happened to me recently. I hadn't accessed this particular email in nearly a decade, and I was genuinely surprised that I could still log in. But what caught me off guard even more were the comments that awaited me, reminders of a life in the past, including notes from friends and, more poignantly, traces of an old breakup that had once seemed like the end of the world. It's a bit surreal, and admittedly somewhat embarrassing, to revisit those moments now. The breakup that dominated my thoughts and feelings back then feels like a distant echo today. At the time, being dumped was a major blow to my ego and emotions. Looking back, it's clear that our relationship wasn't destined to last, and my reaction was more about the sting of rejection than the actual loss of what we had. Fast forward to today. I'm 33 years old, and life has taken a beautifully different turn. I'm married to an incredible woman who is 31, and we've been building our lives together for the past four years. From her, I've learned valuable lessons about the importance of genuinely supporting each other's passions. She has a deep love for running and baking, activities that bring her joy and fulfillment, which I wholeheartedly encourage. We also have a delightful daughter who's about to turn three. Raising her has expanded my understanding of freedom and expression. I am committed to ensuring my daughter grows up knowing she can explore her interests safely and without restraint. I want her to be free to express herself however she likes, as long as it is safe. I would do anything for my wife and daughter. 
Interestingly, I've maintained a distant but amicable connection with my ex via social media. We don't engage in conversations, but we keep up with each other's lives through occasional likes. She has since moved on and is happily married to another woman. They both embrace a unique dress style that's quite distinctive, though less intense than her previous fairy tale princess attire. Their photos, often set against the rustic backdrop of their farm, bring to mind scenes from and of Green Gables. It's heartwarming to see her looking so content and at peace in her current life. This journey from heartache to happiness has taught me a lot about myself and about relationships. My early 20s were marked by immaturity and a lack of understanding about what it means to be truly supportive. Experiencing that breakup, painful as it was, helped me grow and prepared me to be a better partner in my marriage. It underscored the importance of respecting and celebrating my partner's interests as integral parts of who they are. My objectives and viewpoints have changed dramatically now that I have a family of my own. The dramas that used to seem so overwhelming now look like stepping stones that helped me get to where I am now, which is a position of greater understanding and appreciation for the complexities of life. My true love is the easygoing path of our family life, my wife's pastimes, and my daughter's future pursuits. In essence, rediscovering that old email account didn't just remind me of who I used to be, it highlighted how far I've come. It served as a reflection on personal growth and the beauty of moving forward, a reminder of the resilience of the human spirit and the endless capacity for change and happiness that we all possess.